Hey, this is Ed Rigsby and Rigsby Reviews with Jonathan Rigsby. Jonathan Rigsby. And we have some flies that uh, our guest uh, reviewers. This is Rigsby Reviews number 33, I think. It is 33. 33. Yes. And today we're going to talk about a Arizona whiskey. My local whiskey. His local whiskey. Sacred Stave Small Batch Cask Number 16 Release Wheated Whiskey and it was aged in Grenache cask finish. Mm -hmm. It's a single barrel, so it only came out of one barrel of Unity Mixing. It's 122.1 uh, proof, pretty heavy duty. This is bottle number 120, mm -hmm. and the date is 520. So was that uh, the fifth month in the, uh, 2020, day. or is it 520 this year? Doesn't say. Who knows? Who we'll knows? Anyway, so in, in doing some research about this, um, it's also, you didn't, so it's a Santan brewery and distillery. So they do beer and spirits and they have a bunch of different labels. So sacred save is one of them. There's there a bunch, bunch of different ones they do. It's Santan spirits. Now here's the interesting thing back here. It says this single barrel release was hand selected by the head distiller, Grant Gaspec. Brant. Brant, that's a B. Is that a B? Oh, Brant, Brant Ga Gas Gasparek. Gasparek for its unique and outstanding character. So this is kind of like, you know, um, actually like Blanton's was one that kind of started doing this. Just, you know, they take it out of one barrel, they label what barrel mm -hmm. it is. So now I was having a hell of a time doing research, but I did find that this goes for about $75 a bottle. I think it's their most expensive bottle. And did, did you buy it or did you get it with your membership? I bought it. You bought it? I bought it before my membership. Before your membership. So that didn't come in a box. Okay. They put those in the box. Okay. Also, this is their uh, distillery logo. That's it. Nice. So who would have thunk there was Arizona whiskey? And they have everything. They're from, from, they're from Chandler too, aren't they? Chandler. Um, it says Chandler. Yes. So that's where you live. That is where I live. This is this is from Jonathan's backyard. Yeah. Well, they in the downtown near my my house, they have a brew pub and restaurant, and then they have a couple more miles down the road, their actual distillery. Yeah. Center. Yeah. This, I'm actually pretty excited about this. I mean, it's pretty heavy duty proof, but yeah, it, it um, sixty one point five percent alcohol. Now you know what what I here while you're opening it. Sure. What I wanted to do is today. Because it's a warm day, it's uh, in the 80 degrees, and I don't want it that warm. Usually you want uh, ideal for your spirit is about 50 to 60 degrees. So I'm taking a bag of whiskey rocks. These are rocks that I leave in the freezer. Now, a little warning, don't drop it because you're going to have a broken glass in your hand. If you take it on the side and let it fall, there you, would you hand me that other glass, please? In the meantime, take a sniff. Mmm. Oh, that's nice. Mm -hmm. Hold on, let me set that down. Remember, no drop, slide. Okay. Tell me when. That's good. So I'm going to let it sit for just a moment and, and cool it down. Also, I want to talk to you. Now, this is a very unique whiskey. I mean, I, because you can search the internet and it takes a lot of search just to find any listing about it. So very unique. Also, interestingly enough, uh, Cigars International just today sent me Camachos. Now this is a brand new item from Camacho. Um, I, I've always loved the, the, you know, before Davidoff owned Camacho and kind of changed it. I always loved their Corojo. It was a beautiful, really powerful cigar. But this is called a Camacho Triple Maduro. Now this is a Robusto. It's a five inch, five fifty ring. That's five pack at Cigar International is fifty two dollars and fifty cents. So they're not cheap. Um, as far as the flavor, it's bold, five of five. The now the interesting thing also is the filler, the binder, and the wrapper are all various types of Maduro. So the filler is Brazilian, Dominican, and Honduran. The binder is Corojo and Honduran broadleaf. And the wrapper is Maduro and San Andres. San Andres usually is out of Mexico. Um, the origins from uh, Honduras. 
So this is going to be, this is, my guess is this is not for the faint of heart. Strong cigar, strong uh, whiskey. That, well, yeah, it's, we got a brand new cigar, just showed up. I'll go ahead and do that. I'll, I'll start. Like, subscribe, share in the description, discount code, 10% off and free shipping. First order, Cigar Pegs International. Cigar, <laughs> Cigar Pegs Cigar. <laughs> Cigarsinternational.com. Info in the description. Okay. Take my tactical from my open this so tactical? Out. Yeah, because it was free. I don't know. I think this is a tactical knife. Well, <laughs> more so than this. I'll give you that. Um, you always outdo me. Uh, yeah, you taught me. That's what a kid's for. You taught me to do that. There you go. Choose one. Whoop, let's look. Okay. I'll let choose you, I'll one. Let, <laughs> choose one. Don't choose I, one. I wanted, let, I wanted our viewers to see you choose one. So it's like I didn't do it to you, but it doesn't work out. Oh, if I don't like it? Yeah. If you don't like it, it's on you. Triple it. Maduro. <laughs> Triple Maduro. It's a lot of Maduro. It's going to be a lot of Maduro. This How many taste these now that it's set for a second? Oh, good idea. Cheers. Mmm. Smells nice. You can really smell the caramel, you know, from the, uh, from sitting in the barrel. And, this, and it's Ooh, interesting wow. that this these sat in a Grenache barrel too. So initially, what does that mean? Well, a wine. So they had to put it in a Grenache, and a, they would have had to put it in a charred barrel first to get that color, mm -hmm. and then in the Grenache to, to soften it a little bit. Mm -hmm. And um, so let me say, pretty strong, pretty good. It's not like a, a strong that's you don't like, you know. There's a lot going on there. Whoa, there is a lot going on there. It's a serious I mean, whiskey. Well, it's a 122. I mean, shit, that's, that's, that's a lot. I mean, it, it, it's good that we cooled it down just a little bit. Yeah. I wish that damn fly would leave us. I think once we start smoking, the fly is going away. Too bad I didn't have my fly gun that you gave me. Salt gun? Yeah. Try it out. Mmm. Get out of here, flies. Mmm. It 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 has a um, a spiciness to it. it, you know. You got that that that, that the charred oak the caramel to it. It's um, it's very smooth. You know, it's not uh, it's not raspy at all. Very smooth. Yeah, I tried when I went there. They gave me four whiskeys to try, uh -huh. so I picked this one and the other one I gave you. Okay, I would suggest I'm gonna do I'm gonna do a punch. Okay. I'm gonna look like a dog with a tick, all these flies that I'm knocking off from around me. I got an ant on my leg. Gee, my I already had a few ants. Boy, what's going on here? House is getting overrun. I think so. And I just sprayed some bug stuff a couple days ago. The only thing I'm a little worried about whether this is humidified enough because I it was, cracked mine. You no, know, because it was shipped to me and Usually when something shipped to me, I like to try to put it in the humidor for a month before I try them. But since it was since it was such a new item, I thought, well, you know what the hell? Let's um, let's give it a try. Yeah, let's see. Don't waste any time. Well, and and and, and with that whiskey that you said, let's try this one because it's so strong yeah. that that I would think that you need a cigar that's going to stand up to it. And um, don't forget. Camacho! Do I have it upside down? Oh, shoot, I have it upside down. Camacho. Flies. Cigar Rights of America lighter. Don't forget to join Cigar Rights of America. Help them out. The advocacy work they do enables you and I to have cigars at our leisure and not worry about all of the work and the freaky Zoe and the bureaucrats who are trying to take our cigars away from us because. It just doesn't work for me. Might have to have a cigar party. <laughs> the Boston Tea Party? Like a tea party. <laughs> Took me a minute to catch that, yeah. Yeah. Yes, you already from the beginning on this one. I like the taste compared to the last cigar we reviewed. The 
Anchor? What is it? No, not Ashton. Anchor. Ashton. Ashton VS. Which that one turned out okay over time for me, but this one I can already tell. It's like, yep, this is my style. Yeah, I mean, I I uh, I, I figured you'd, you'd you would dig this one. So I'm just a Maduro, a Maduro guy, yeah. basically, because it seems like every time we have. But those Oscars you bought weren't Maduro. But those, those were Habano. Really, yeah, but those were really good. Maybe I like Habano and Maduro. Yeah, this thing. Which one's darker, or the? This one's this one's darker than the Oscars. The Maduro is usually darker than the Habano. Is it one Generally. step above Habano? Um, it depends. You know, Habano is a range from medium to darkish. Mm -hmm. Nowhere near this, but. Okay, what does it mean that it's triple Maduro? Well, like, like I said a minute, just the triple is the filler is Maduro, the binder is Maduro, and the cover wrapper is Maduro. So okay. all of the tobacco in this cigar, triple, is Maduro. Got it. Different types okay. of Maduro, but sure. it's all Maduro to give you this this big, you know, burst of flavor. And so um, you know, what they're talking about is because uh, a lot of the tobacco is from uh, Honduras, the climate's very, very similar to the Cuba, the uh, Vuta Abajo region. The Vuta Abajo region um, is kind of like the premier growing region in Cuba for, uh, for cigars. I just had uh, a gal, Christine Morley, send me uh, when my leg was broken, a, a book on cigars from um, UK. It was mostly about Cuba yeah. and um, talking about. And so um, the, uh, this was from the, uh, the ranchos in the Jastaran, and it was uh, built under the, the, the loving eyes of the Iroa family. So. Yeah, for 62, what is it, 61.5%? It's, it's, it's drinkable. Powerful. But it's drinkable. It's drinkable. Because yeah. sometimes, I mean, I've, you've had me try like white lightning and stuff. I'm like, Whoa. <laughs> well, and then you remember that that Trader Joe's whiskey that was 125 that I screwed up and, and turned the microphone off and we never released it because there was no oh, sound. That's what it was. That was 125. Okay. So I was even a hair stronger than that one. Hmm. Yeah. So I'm. So this Camacho, it's delivering. I mean, it 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 it, it delivers on its promise. It's 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 pretty powerful. I would not give this to a first time smoker, unless of course you wanted to kill them. Um, somebody, if it's somebody that you hated, and you wanted to give them their first cigar, yeah, maybe give them one of these. But if, if it's somebody you liked, no. Yeah. That's good. It's got the. I was trying to like just. Describe the taste last time when we had the Archer. What was it? Ashton. Ashton. A little bit sweet, a little bit coca. Maybe, the, yeah, maybe it's the chocolate, chocolate in Like the burnt chocolate, mm -hmm. I like. Mm -hmm. Maybe that's what it is. Because, like, I, with this one, I like the taste that's on my tongue right now. With the other one, I didn't like the taste on my tongue for the, until 10, 15 minutes into it. No. Oh, and at okay. that point, I was probably just numb to the taste, anyways. Okay. Could be. Which, so I probably just didn't even like the mm -hmm. taste at all. Just at, as we went through, I was drinking, and then and it got better. Yeah, but this one, it's just good right off the bat. Yeah, at least for me. Yeah, my yeah. taste buds. Yeah. See, I'm doing better. I'm doing more than just. It's, it's good. good. <laughs> what do you think, Jonathan? It's, it's good. It's good. It's bad. It's good. So you didn't comment on my new Aloha shirt. Uh, Jeff Owens from Hawaii sent this to me a few days ago uh, for my birthday. Okay. Oh. And in the box was a, a bottle of Filipino rum that we'll be reviewing one of these days. Yes. Well, I'll expand my vocabulary. It's nice. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> it's, yeah. a, it's a Tory Richard uh, nice. Amanda was a little bummed out. She, uh, My wife's pregnant and she had me touch her belly and it was the first time I felt the baby kick. Granted, I was at work at the office and I felt it. I'm like, hey, I felt it. And I'm like, nice. She's like, that's it? Nice? And I'm like, <laughs> yeah. nice. No, no, it's no, good. No. It's amazing. It's amazing. Like, it's probably, amazing. I mean, it is. I just, I don't know. I just, you just kind of, you just kind of, yeah. nice. Yeah. You're, you're, you're standard go to. Nice. Yeah. Yeah. Standard go to. Okay. Now, now, now I'm going to get to these two together. 
Mm. But you know the interesting thing also with this one, when they say it's a wheated whiskey, that's kind of like Maker's Mark or like Elijah Craig or Larceny or Dwarf. Um, to be bourbon, it has to be 51% corn, but to be a wheated whiskey, it doesn't have to be 51% corn because it's not bourbon. They're just calling it a wheated whiskey. They don't give you the information as what percentage of, uh, of the grains, but um, because it says wheated, you know that, that, that the wheat is pretty high, you know, in, in, in it. So it's, it's, um, it's a very cool uh, sacred stave. What a name, sacred stave. Yeah, well, I'll, I'll say this is a nice end of my visit in California. Yeah, yeah maybe I'll come back. Yeah, I'll be back in four weeks. Just about. This is what your employees want to hear. I'll be back. My coffee's good. Oh, that's good. Now, now that I'm down a little more than a quarter of an inch, getting close to half an inch, it um, it's it's softened just a little bit, and um, I mean I'm still getting a lot of that um, that richness, but not quite as as piercing as it as it was. So or maybe it's because the whiskey's helping to soften it. I don't know. Maybe. So I'm done with my Glen Cairn with a cold rock in it. The mm -hmm. Glen Cairn glass. Oh that's a list one. Oh, that's a, oh, okay. Oh, the, the type of glass, sorry. Like, yeah, okay. yes. Okay, you're ready to move into the other. I called it a tissue instead of a Kleenex. Okay, there you go. Right? Yeah. Um okay. I got you. So our next our next try is again we have these uh, we have these ice balls, and again you want to be really careful how you drop it in the glass. You want to kind of ease it in. Now these are kind of cool glasses because if you look at it, there's a dimple, right? See right there, there's a dimple, and so what it does it keeps the ice cube up. Let me see if there's a drop or two of water in there. So it keeps the ice cube up to where it just barely touches the spirit, to where it, it, it cools the spirit, but the ice cube doesn't melt quite as quick. These are awesome. Yeah. Yeah, I bought those for you. <laughs> right. You know, actually, I might have. No, that's good. Oh, sorry. Excuse me. Actually, your mother and I were wandering in the thrift store in Ventura and we bought these. Yeah, thrift stores are so great. They, they had such good stuff. They had six of them in there. And I was looking at them. I go, oh my God, I'm buying those. Because Ryan had bought me, uh, your brother had bought me some that were a little bit smaller and a little bit smaller uh, ice ball. And then when I saw these, I go, oh, these look great for the big ice balls. Well, hopefully we don't ruin the whiskey with this ice. Oh, well, let's see. I don't think we'll ruin it. Opening it up. Should I did the. The flight at, at Santan, they gave me a little dropper with, mm -hmm. so I could do like one drop of water at a time. At first I'm like, what is this? You know something, blah, blah, blah. I think because of, of the, the potency of it, just this little bit uh, does open it up very nicely. Oh yeah. Yes, it's, it makes it significantly more smooth. Not that it wasn't smooth already. It just, it just opens it up. Yeah, that's a good time. Mm. I like mm -hmm. that. Mm. Ah, life of luxury. Cigars and whiskey. Yeah, it's the shits. Somebody's gotta do it. You know, if we if we didn't sit around and smoke cigars and drink whiskey, then just think the cigar makers wouldn't make any money. Whiskey people wouldn't make any money. I mean, you know, we're And we're, the economy would collapse we're, without we're, cigars and whiskey. We're doing our part to keep the economy going. I mean, that's because yep. we're because we're caring people. We're real givers, mm -hmm. as, you, as you say about yourself. Mm -hmm. A giver. I mean, it's good to burn up a ten dollar stick. Yeah, and good thing we don't have fluffers because they'd be out of a job with these cigars. Pretty much, we wouldn't even need them. Yeah, we still have to work on that. We need. We need. We. We need to to grow our channel to where we can have a, a crew. We need, crew. We need fluffers. We need a director. We need we need some 
some person to set everything up, set up the studio so, so we don't have to do it. The five minutes it takes us to set up. We need a crew. Okay, you guys, buy lots of cigars from Cigars International. So, um, well, I guess we're not going to make any money on that deal, but at least they might, they'll keep giving us cigars. Yeah, we're not doing this to make money. We're doing this for fun. Speak for yourself. <laughs> hmm. I'm is... hiring if you need to go. Oh, thank you. Yeah. That would be good. Always hiring. Okay. Mm. This is what your employees would love to have your old man there at the office. Yeah. I mean, I wouldn't actually even drop it. Watching, watching everything you're doing. And then I call you every day and report to you. Did you know what so and so did? Can't believe it. I'd be a good rat fink. You don't even know what rat fink is. When I was a kid, um, Brad Fink was a, a, a comic character. And, it, you know, back then, you know, it was real popular with kids to make models and stuff. He was the Rat Fink model. And so Rat Fink always told on everybody. Mm. Don't be a Rat Fink. A narc? Kind of. Mm. Same difference. Yeah. Tattletail? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Don't be a Rat Fink. A whistleblower? Mm -hmm. Well, no, I think whistleblowers are kind of, I mean, yeah, they're a tattletale, but, but that, that tattle needed to be told. So, um, you know, the, 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 the Johnny spit on Susie, I don't know that that tattle needs to be told, but that, you know, that this government agency. Something that affects a lot of people. Yeah, yes. that, 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 I kind of think that needs to be told. I get that. Yeah. Hmm. Let's see if I can make it a. As big as the oh archer. yesterday, the last dash, yeah. Like totally yeah. Archer, as, as as in like Ashton. Oh, the Ashton, yeah. Why do you keep wanting to call it Archer? Mm -hmm. hmm. Ah, yeah. Now that now that the whiskey's got just a just a teeny bit of water in it, it's yeah, just it's opening up really really nice. It's beautiful whiskey. Yeah, I think with my because I'm part of the cast club now with Santan. So I think when they have <clears throat> release limited releases like this one, we'll I'll get, get notified. Uh -huh. I, I mean, I'll have to buy it, but yeah. I'll, I'll get like a heads up. Yeah. Like, hey, come down. Well, you know, taste it and buy you, it. You, know, you might also look into like a lot of the distilleries, as do the wineries, they offer their, their members of their clubs to come in and, and help bottle. Oh, I think they, there was something about yeah. that when when they do these. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. There's something about that because then they usually they give yeah. you a free bottle or something. I remember reading and, that. And give you lunch and oh yeah, man, I if I would go down and help bottle. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, it's only a mile and a half yeah. from my house, or actually the actual distillery is probably three miles, but still very close. Yeah, no, it's good stuff. Yeah, thanks for bringing it. Appreciate it. Did you just bring it for our, our reviews, or was this my birthday gift? Both. Oh, okay. I'm not like I'm leaving it with you. Oh, well, I assume as yeah. much. I hope as much. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, I got in the the box cast club box. I got the other one, another one of the other ones I got you, mm -hmm. Crimson Oath. Crimson Oath. Crimson Oath. Oath. Oh, Crimson Oath. Oath. Yeah. 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 Crimson Oath. There's like a honey whiskey, um, a rum, a gin, bourbon, and then bitters. Um, yeah, you can leave the honey whiskey home, but I that, finished it already. Is it the, the, well, because they the the is this small bottle? No, it's fifth. Oh. But they but, with the honey whiskey and the gin and the um, Basically everything but the crimson mouth. They give you a recipe for a cocktail. Oh, okay. And so the honey whiskey is only thirty five percent, and it's whiskey, sweet iced tea, some lemon juice, and ice. Probably be and good. That was good. That that's what I. Yeah, probably be good. That's the only. That is how I drank the entire mm -hmm. bottle okay. within a few weeks. Do they have a? Um, do they? Uh, I didn't notice when I was looking at their website. Um, and uh, what's the one? Uh, Santan, I think it's Santan.com or Santan Distillery.com. I think it might be Santan Brewery. And then there's a click, or maybe the yeah. whatever, Santan, uh, Arizona, you'll find it. Um, that uh, I didn't notice a old fashioned mix. 
Did they have an old-fashioned mix? I don't know. Okay. I didn't look it up. It yeah. looked like they had a lot of stuff. Yeah. One of my favorite old-fashioned mixes comes from St. Augustine Distillery in Florida. <laughs> and, and you put um, one part um, uh, old-fashioned mix to two parts whiskey. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, put a little bit of uh, orange peel in there and ice. Really, really good. Yeah, we well, don't check it out. If they if they have old-fashioned pre-made the mix, pick that up. We can go to the distillery when you come mm. into town in mm. a few weeks. Okay, that'd be fine. I think I think because I'm a, a cast club member, it said if you want to do a tour, they take care of you. So I'm assuming you could, you don't have to pay for it. Oh, well, that would be a hoot. I'd love to do that. I love going on distillery tours. That's as I travel around the country. I'm not yeah. traveling as much as I used to, but. It was always, I always had so much fun uh, traveling yeah. around and going to distillery tours. You know, I can do that real quick and while the, everyone else does something else. Yeah. Because I think you and I are the only ones that would actually enjoy yeah. that. Yeah. So. Mm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. When I, when I hit the, the distillery up in Mammoth, your mom stayed back in the hotel room. Yeah. Shelter distillery. Well, if, you, if you're not, if you don't like whiskey or spirits, Oh no! You know what's interesting? I had a I had a whiskey. I can't remember which one it was. I had a whiskey uh, oh about two three weeks ago. I said they're sitting there, and your mom said, "Let me try it." And then she said, "Oh, this is really good." And she finished it up, which surprised the hell out of me. But I can't remember which one it was now. Something I was drinking. It's still it really hasn't changed much yet. It's made good. I, I, my, my basic observation is that the, at the very beginning it was a massive burst of flight, that flavor, just an explosion. Like triple in Maduro. Yeah, and now it's still very, very powerful, but now it's it's kind of um, it's kind of I guess I'd say it's settled down, hmm. and um, and now it's 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 even more pleasurable. You know, the, the first few pots were pretty good, don't get me wrong. But for for my palate, now it's getting, how much do I have there? About an inch. It's it's getting very pleasurable. You know, I haven't, I haven't bought that many Camachos since um, Davidoff bought them out. Because I was introduced to, to Camacho back, oh, years ago at the Castro Mobis. There was a, the first, they called it Sink Con, Cigar Con, whatever it was, Cigar Con. And come on, the Camacho guys were up there and tried a few really good. And I conned the guy in with selling me a box, and three of us were sitting around the VIP tent spooked the box. Yeah, not so good. Now you can't see it. I'd have to, like, I'd oh, have, to do, I'd have to do that so you can actually see the label. I'll stick with just the logo. It's a cool logo. I mean, it's like a. Yeah, it's like lizards or snakes or something. Whatever it is. It's kind of hard to tell. It looks kind of like a doctor's thing in the logo. It's easier to see on here. Yeah. You can actually see it's like two snakes with like uh, wings. Wings. Yeah. Is that really cloudy? I get close. Yeah. That's pretty cool. Got it. That's not that clear. Either way. But that's a trucker style hat. Not my favorite. Yeah, these ones are I, I know you love these them. ones fit my head yeah. better. Yeah. So I, they're, I need I need it's like that. the only kind of hat that fits my head right. I need those auto caps, like the my um uh, the, the flat. My the, blue, it's just smooth. The no me. structure hat. Yeah, my blue angels. Yeah, there's no structure. It's un, un, unconstructed. Yeah, that's my. It's favorite. called a dad hat. Dad hat. That's what they're called. I'm a dad. I'm about to be. Am I, I'm gonna have to start wearing those. Mm -hmm. oh, lucky wearing these. You're gonna have to switch to a dad hat. Nah, it just like it looks dumb on my head. Okay. So, um, look at. I mean, look at that ash. That's really a pretty ash. It really is a nice ash. Good color. Good striations. It's just very well good. constructed cigar. Yeah. Well distilled whiskey. Good times. We have so many whiskeys to try from your birthday. Mm -hmm. So many, so many good ones. Yeah, we got enough to keep us going for quite a while. Yeah, and I'm gonna keep bringing Santan ones out. Okay. okay. Every time I get like a, a special one. Yeah. Oh, we don't have to. Review like maybe, the standard maybe, ones that they do, but maybe then, in six months I should tell everybody it's my 70th birthday again. Yeah, yeah, that's a great. Get, idea. get get deliveries. Yeah.
Oh shit. Your phone? Oh, I don't want to know. Right, right, right on your zipper or anything. Money shot. That's kind of a mess. <laughs> Not so much. Right, right, on, right, huh? on, right on my new cushion. That's fine. Oh. There's some water from the glass, so there's a little layer of protection. Well, it's good to know that yours fell because I won't wait too long to, to, to tip mine off. Yeah. I wasn't thinking, I was not cradling it like the last one. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm. Ah, boy, that is really good whiskey. I, you know, it's funny. I really do like wheated whiskeys and or like the wheated bourbons. Um, as I mentioned before, the, 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 the makers and the, and the Elijah Craig and the Larceny. Yeah. Uh, I mean, I just, I really, uh, for whatever it is for my palate, the, the wheated whiskeys are just, I, I really find them enjoyable. Yeah, I think the more whiskeys we do, because obviously, you know, before we started doing these reviews, I hadn't really tried a lot of whiskeys. I'm going to, really, I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to, I hadn't done it on purpose. Okay. But I think what I've found is that I'm not that into bourbons. Really? I think they're a little bit too sweet for me. Is that a fact? I think so. Because well, when I did the, the flight at Santan, mm -hmm. The one that I liked the least was the bourbon. Oh, is that so? And I think it's because of the sweetness, like this. So, I don't know. I could be wrong. I'll try another bourbon and we'll find out. Well, I mean, you know, the thing with bourbon is there, there, there's such a range of flavor. In sure. Bourbons. But uh, I also really like uh, Irish, or no, uh, Scotch. I really like Scotch. I used to not like Scotch. It used to give me heartburn yeah. like immediately, but now well, you know, I, don't, yeah. I don't get the heartburn. Scot so. Scotch is interesting. I, I, I like... Um, for my birthday party this weekend, um, a few people brought scotch, and Michael Casimir brought me a really, really nice bottle of Highland, a uh, very expensive bottle. And and I really like Highland because yeah. it's not quite as peaty. Now, now somebody else, Bill Caban, a buddy from Gorian, the Lager Bluin, he brought me a Lager Bluin 60. That's my, now, that's my style. I now, love the peat. And, and, it tastes and like campfire. I, I, I can only do about one glass. Of the, of the heavy peat, like the lager bullion. It's interesting. Or, I can drink that all night. Yeah, it's just a little bit much for me. It's it's like nectar for me. Well, I mean, there's plenty here for you to drink. Yeah, you know, if um, if you don't want the lager bullion, no, I have to keep it. I'll take it. No, I have to keep it because Michael gave. Uh, I mean, yeah, Bill gave it to me. Bill Caban gave it to me. I have to keep it. And then you gave it to me. No, no, we can't do that. When it gets down to half, you can have it. All right. If Bill's watching this, Bill, if you comment and say I can have it. No. <laughs> when it gets down to half, you can have it. You know, actually, I think there's, I think there's another bottle of lager bourbon in the bar that's only got about that much in the bottle. Yeah. No, I, I, I had that one because that was the first time I had lager bourbon. Because when I, I think it was like a year ago or so, I, I was super into yeah, I remember scotch. That. Yeah. And then you had me try all the ones you had. I took you over to Trader Joe's. And you yeah. Some. And we kind of determined that mm -hmm. I like the Isla, mm -hmm. the Pete. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, it's it's very it's very distinctive, and and it's it's just I can drink a little, but I can't drink a lot. But like with bourbon, I can I can drink a lot. Yeah. Uh, or most most whiskeys, uh, most American style whiskeys, I can drink a fair amount. I mean Irish whiskeys. It's almost I like better to... that you can't drink a lot so that it controls how much you drink. Well, there is that. Right. Yeah. There's a, well, yeah, I try to be careful. What yeah. did we drink when I drank the whole bottle? Um, I don't even know what it was. I don't was remember. Good. I don't remember. When you mean the night? Yes. The night. The night where I held you hostage yeah, and, and wouldn't let you go. That was the night Dennis was here. He just <laughs> your mother just brought it back from the emergency. So Dennis is sitting here in a in a full leg cast, cast, and he's drinking. He was he was on narcotics, so he just he didn't know what was going on. And he had to spend the night because all of us were too blitzed to take him home. And then you spent the night. It was like it was like, you know, frat boys on the sofa. Rigs, uh, Rigsby bed and breakfast. Yeah. Although it, it took me like four times of... Um, I was broken when I woke up. It took me four times broken. four times of carpet cleaner to clean up uh, your mess. Oh, and then, you, and then your mom had made chicken paprika. So you were, you were heaving up all the paprika, which really stains the white carpet. What a mess. Gee, many Christmas, that was a mess. Yeah, well... Sometimes you have to clean up after your kids, I guess. 
I'm about, I'm about to learn that in a few months. I guess. All the times I had to go to uh, the principal's office in your various schools to have little conversations with them. Well, usually I was, you know. Sometimes you were right. Sometimes you Sometimes. Not. Sometimes. Could be wrong. You always liked it when I came in with reams of paper with all the, the post-its all over the place. You come all like. It's just kind of With different. like the education code, like actually. Yeah. <laughs> It's just highlighted. Intimidate. It's just to intimidate them. Highlighted with like post-it notes like sticking out of it. It's like, they're like, I don't know, one of these parents. Yeah, the administrators go, oh God, oh, do we have to deal with this? And that's why Amanda and I are going to homeschool. There you go. You won't have to deal with that. Nope. Yeah, if you're homeschooling your kids, Make a comment on the video. Tell us that you're homeschooling your kids. Be interesting to know if anybody's homeschooling. Anybody. I think my generation is going to be the largest demographic of homeschooling. I think you're probably right about that. It, it appears. I mean, what's going on it's in the, the country right now? It appears because I'm I'm kind of late late on the having a kid train for my generation. Yeah. Yeah. Well, when what's what's millennial? What's what is it? What's the start? Because Ryan is technically a millennial. He's yeah. Eighty five. Yeah, or no, 84. 84. Millennial was, you know, I've seen different dates. Yeah, it was like 80, somewhere between 80, 82. Uh, to 2000, right before. Yeah. To, to late, late 1990s. I didn't know if it went to quite to 2000. I, I can't remember. Well, I'm definitely on like the younger end of millennial. Yeah. So I'm 31. Yeah. 90. Okay, so I'm about about a third of the way through the cigar, and um, it, it, it's still delivering really, really nice flavor. Oh, it's a great cigar. Yeah, yeah, it's it's. This is my kind of cigar. And 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 this is, I mean, brand new cigar just came out. You know, I mean, Camacho Triple Maduro Robusto Robusto. Yeah, well, they I think they have in the Triple Maduro. I think it said they had three sizes. And, um, but Cigars International always sends me Maduro. I mean, uh, Robusto is it's smaller and it's probably less expensive. Yeah, you know, it's fine. It's like the perfect size to review. Yeah, it's not that too way, It's not like an hour and a half. Review. Right, right. And honestly, kind of like the smaller ones because it's not as big of a commitment. Mm -hmm. Especially because every time we do a review, your, mom, your mom's waiting for you for it to come in for dinner. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. it's like, aren't you guys done yet? No. We'll be in in a minute. Yeah. And tonight is schnitzel. So that is one of your favorite dishes. Oh, schnitzel. My, my, schnitzel. my wife is Austrian. And so um, she learned from her mother to cook a lot of Austrian dishes. Yeah. And Oma's uh, in there in her schnitzel laboratory. Mm -hmm. Just getting mm -hmm. them ready. Mm -hmm. Her schnitzel bunk. Yeah. Yeah. No, I, I, I really, really like the schnitzel. You know, probably, I have to say, of, 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 the, of the German slash Austrian uh, dishes, probably the Hoxen, which is German, or the Stoitzen, which is, is the Austrian. Hoxen, like the like, hip or something? Leg. Yeah, it's the upper upper leg of the pig. And they it's put the it, leg you broke? Exactly. And, it, and they, they put it in a rotisserie thing, you just keep going and going. And the outside gets crusty, and the inside just, just steam cooks. And you and you break it. It's almost like a shawarma, like how they have it on the thing and it. No, no off. different because shawarma is kind of the same um, texture all the way through. Okay. But but the hoxen is like you break through the crust, which is the outside, and and you get into the inner side. It's just soft and and melty and and, and, and very moist and flavorful and like foist. What is foist? Moist. Moist. And German for moist. Moist. Foist. So good. Looky there, you can still remember your German words. So going to school in Germany for a year turned out really good. You can still remember some of your German words. Yeah, I mean, I didn't speak German with your Berlin friends. Oh, with Peter? I, did, gotcha. a, I did a little bit. Oh. I just basically told them in German that my German's rusted. Oh. And I've forgotten everything. Oh. And they're like, they didn't well, it, sound, they didn't it sound, sounds good when they you said that. that. No, I just didn't feel like trying. trying. <laughs> Never, but I've lost. I mean, it's been almost ten years. I know. So I was there the 2012-13 school year. Now it's 2012. So 
2000. Actually, 2020. This year was 2020. No, it's 22. 22. Sorry. Yeah, it's 10 years. Yeah. So 10 years ago, mm -hmm. I went out there because I went out there August 2020. Well, you know, 2012. you remember not long after you came back, we went over to the local uh, German restaurant. And you remember somebody said to you, what, what part of Munich are you from? Hmm. It's like, that, that uh, one, I think that was a, a, a tremendous compliment. You know, sure. what part of Munich are you from? I, I mean, you spoke well enough that, that you pulled the wool over their eyes. Hmm. I mean, that, that, I'm, I'm, that's impressive. Maybe. And, yeah. you told, and you told me when you worked at Neptune's Net, you spoke German to the people all the time. Yeah, every day. Yeah. Pretty much once I stopped working in the restaurant industry, I stopped using German. Oh, too bad. For now. I still play around with some, like, language apps every once in a while. Are there any German restaurants in uh, Phoenix that you can go to and uh, chat with the people? Uh, there's this place called Edelweiss. Oh, Edelweiss. That Amanda and I went to. It was mm -hmm. really close to where we lived before we oh, moved to Chandler. Mm -hmm. But no one, like even the servers, they couldn't even pronounce things right. Oh, they yeah. weren't German. Yeah, not too bad. Or Austrian. Yeah, yeah. That's okay. Yeah. I know. I think I'll always know enough to get by if I were to be in mm -hmm. a German-speaking country. Yeah. But other than that, not so much. No. It's just, you know, you don't use it, use it, you lose it. Yeah. But I mean, okay, if I, if I was planning on going to one of those countries, the, the weeks, months leading up to it, I'd be studying. Yeah. I'd be, getting, yeah. be remembering everything, and it'd be, and it'd be great when I got there. Probably. Because I have the base. Yeah. That's one of the great refreshing. things if you watched on the internet uh, German news, because then you're going you're gonna to listen to the, con the current language. Well, that was the thing when I came back and like tried to speak with Oma. She used the Austrian. It's a little different. Well, no, even when she spoke high German, she used like old old language. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, it's like mm -hmm. it's like mm -hmm. as if mm -hmm. as if you kind you of know, time warp. Well, yeah. If you like, yeah. let's say you learned English in England, and then your grandma was from England seventy years ago. But live somewhere else, and then you talk to her. She's using well, whatever language that she language was then. Yeah. So they be, like, she was using words. I'm like, I have no idea. What yeah. Saying. Yeah. Your mom was pretty pretty distraught when you came back from Germany. She goes, "Oh my God, my son sounds like a German." It's like, well, duh. It's time for Austria. It's worse. <laughs> I would have gone to Austria. They just didn't have the a program through my school. Yeah. Oh well. That's fine. I mean, either way, even if I went to Austria, they would have been. I would have learned high German. I would learn the same thing, and then learn slang. What is that called? Is that Hoch German? Hochdeutsch. Hoch, Hoch, Deutsch. Hoch, Hoch, Hoch Deutsch. You know, it was actually interesting. Some of them, some of the people I went with uh, for the German program, they came back here, finished their degree, and then went back there to oh, get really? a master's. And some of them uh, live there right now. Oh, is that so? Yeah. Oh, wow. It's interesting because some of the ones that live there now who mm -hmm. obviously have, must be fluent, mm -hmm. like kind of like weren't like my German was better than theirs oh, really? when we were in, in class, but you know, they right. kept going. Yeah. So there's definitely got way better. Than sure. Mine. Sure. Yeah. It's yeah. interesting. But you told me that all the uh, people over there loved listening to your Hollywood English. Yeah. Yeah. I guess if you grew up in Southern California, your English is Hollywood English. Yeah, so they, a, little, a, little it, bit, a little bit different than if you grew up in South Carolina. Yeah, that's yeah, the English that you hear in the movies. Yeah, yeah. Clear and concise English. Is it? But you mumble sometimes. I mumble all the time. Okay. Half the time, Amanda has no idea what I'm saying. She's like, what? I'm like, what? <laughs> that's too funny. Well, this thing's still uh, this thing's still pumping. It's um, it's it, it really is. It, it uh, I would say to anybody watching this, if if you are a cigar aficionado, um, this is worth giving. It's worth giving it a try. 
Yeah. Um, I'll sign that expenses. Sorry. A five pack for 50 dollars and 50 cents. Yeah, yeah, that, that, that's very reasonable. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. I would smoke this cigar again. For sure. The Ashton, I probably wouldn't smoke again. No. No. Well, one of your mom's friends brought me um, an Ashton Millennium yeah. uh, torpedo for my, my birthday, which I'm really looking forward to smoking. It's a uh, just one or two. She's brought one. Yeah, it's a thirty dollars cigar. We'll talk all these friends just buying you one cigar. Okay. Don't they know that we do reviews? Yeah, they're they supposed to buy two. They're just not showing the love. We have to talk with, you know. Yeah, terrible. Yeah, terrible. If, you, if you're gonna send me a cigar, send two. Yeah. So yeah, yeah. He's smoking for two. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but we still have a lot of cigars in the queue. That we got to try out for a bunch. Uh, Scars International. From Scars International, we still have some Caldwells. We still have some sticks. Uh, House of Sticks. Sticks, sticks. All the sticks were good. Oh, those were all really. Those good. are all. Yeah, they awesome were awesome cigars. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, at uh, what is it? Houseofsticks.com. Is that what their website was? No idea. Yeah. Anyway. S T Y X X. Yeah. 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 This is a good one. Yeah, it's just, um, it's not bitter. I'm not getting any bitterness at all, are you? I am now. I'm a little further along than you yeah. on it. But It's um, not as good as it was, but oh, it's still good. Is it? Oh, really? Is it? Well, maybe work, show me where it should show. Yeah, let's see. Well, I'm not too much behind you. Mm -hmm. well, my taste buds are some more sensitive. I haven't smoked as many cigars as yet. Get another sip of, uh, of the, uh, the whiskey. Sacred Staves, Sacred Cast Staves. number 16. Sacred Weed Staves. Whiskey. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, it's a really good whiskey. My ice cube is melting a little bit. Yeah, same. Well, it's, I mean, the, the ambient. like drinking water at this point. Well, the ambient temperature right now is probably in the low 80s, high 70s. So it, 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 it I looked up today, uh, Chandler, Arizona, where I live. I'm, 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 107, oh, 108, oh, all week. Oh, jeez. <laughs> yeah, order us some cooler weather when we come to visit you. It's not that bad, though. You just get used to it. It's like being a, you know, a frog in a pot of boiling water. You just get used to it. Can we call you? Yeah, my phone's ringing. Yeah, I'm going to do it. No, I'm just going to push the button. No, 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 come on. I'm push the button. Who's calling you? No oh, joke or so. I got a hand grip. So I'll call Joe later. Who's Joe Crisillo? Joe Crisillo is. Give him a shout out. Hey, Joe. Joe Crisillo is my cigar peg cigar bitch. Oh, um, dang. Some fighting words. He's got, no, no, no. He's got a shirt that says cigar bitch on it. Okay. So it so all he accepts the, his position. Oh, yeah. So at all the cigar peg parties, um, you know, the Swede and the party, he's in charge of selling all the cigars. And uh, he, he embraced that. So. So Lindsay Adams is the door bitch, and so so we, we have a door bitch, and we have a cigar bitch. So it's um, all right then. <laughs> ah, you're so nice to your friends. You know, I, I'm a giver. Yeah. Name I name. give them titles they love. Yeah. No, with Lindsay years ago, because I had working the door of the suite all the time. And one year he said, I, "I want a shirt that says cigar bitch." So the next year he had a shirt that said cigar bitch. <laughs> And then Joe had a shirt that said, I'm sorry, Lindsay's was door bitch and Joe's is cigar bitch. Got it. So, yeah. Yeah. Joe, uh, when, he, when, he, he, when he built out the basement, he was in, uh, outside Hershey, Pennsylvania, and uh, he built a cigar lounge in his basement. Now, last time I visited him was before he did that. So the next time I visit him, I'm going to go out there and do a review in his cigar den. That would be good. Yeah, sure. Sure. If he's a speaker like you, I'm sure he's got similar equipment. No, oh, Joe never shuts up. There so, you go. There you go. Perfect. Yeah. Do a review. I can't get a word in edgewise. I'll call Joe later. I better get rid of this just in case. I don't want it to fall on me. It's it's kind You're of holding it over your whiskey. It's kind of dripping. Careful. There, there. I think I'm rid of that. I don't want to wear it. 
Cool. I think that's probably it. Just right at the end. Okay, so what we have cigar. to do, you know what we have to do, which helps me to get a, a thumbnail. So I'll hold up the cigars, and you hold up the whiskey. The sacred stave. And then we'll let everybody see Camacho and whiskey. And that way we have a, a really good thumbnail to use for this. Although you don't have your uh, Cigars International, um, but that's okay. So everybody, Camacho, Triple Maduro, very good cigars, Sacred Stave, very good whiskey. And we'll catch you all on the next review, whenever that is. Hopefully sooner than later. Okay, guys, catch you next time. Bye now.